Quando vuoi iniziamo, vediamo. Siamo you ready? Un momento. Yes. Yes, thank you. Vado? Vado? Vai, ammetti tutto. Stanno entrando tutti. All the people are entering. Good luck. Just, just wait one minute. Okay. Okay, when you want. So, yes, it seems that the colleagues and friends and guests are arriving. Stefan, you are muted. So yeah, why not reaching people with my voice? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, morning, ladies and gentlemen, from Model to Practice, the Good Morning Stakeholder Forum from Leap for FNSSA. Leap for FNSSA stands for Long-Term European African Partnership for Food and Nutrition, Security and Sustainable Agriculture. Um, a warm welcome to you. Today is the 8th of February 2022. And today's Good Morning is dedicated to the question of linking research and practice at program level. Um, we are very happy to welcome you here. I see now that my slides are not moving. Um, give me a second, now they move. Uh, please, as written here, get a tea or coffee and let's move on. Uh, let's continue with our meetings uh, and um, allow me to introduce myself briefly. My name is Stefan Hafner. I am working for the German Aerospace Center and serving the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. And I hand over now to my colleague, uh, Jackie Cardo. We both are facilitating this good morning session uh, from model to practice. Jackie, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefan. It is a joy and a pleasure to be part of this discussion. We welcome our uh, participants who we hope as we go along will uh, increase in number because we are we had a huge registration compared to the numbers that are showing up now. Now we need everyone, each one of you to become a part of building or developing a platform for the AU and EU on research and innovation on food, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture. You must give your inputs and it is important that we collect that. Uh, so welcome to day three, as Stefan indicated, that we'll be looking at um, uh, moving, linking research and practice at program level. Again, if you are interested or want to uh, express your interest in becoming part of the platform or part of the process, please use the link that is highlighted on the slide just now. And I think also our colleagues at CM will also put that link on our chat. Stefan. And also, uh, I think you will notice just as we've done with the other uh, good morning sessions, <laughs> get your feedback uh, through the Mentimeter uh, uh, platform. 
Now, the Mentimeter allows us to interact, get your views, sometimes in terms of short responses, word clouds, or just having a vote. So we need you to have your say at intervals, various intervals, we'll be able to show you uh, what links to join, what link to join to be able to participate. If you have a smartphone, do not hesitate to scan the code that you can see on your screen right now. Or if you opt to use the uh, URL, please use uh, the menti.com address, but you have to enter a specific code. But our colleagues at CM will also put those uh, the Mentimeter links on the chat. If you click on that chat link, then you go directly without having to insert the codes as well. Uh, welcome, I think another very good morning. And then also just to uh, conclude our introductory pre preliminaries is to say we also need to know who's on board. Uh, we already have 42 participants at the moment. It would be nice if we knew what your name is, what sector you come from and sector we refer to the private sector. A, a farmer or agribusiness, if you're with the NGO sector, if you're a funding agency or a funding uh, partner, policymaker or decision maker. So just indicate what sector you are from. But besides that, because we are also in the process of uh, a cluster forming in terms of institutions, let us know which institution you come from and which country. So if you could do that uh, right away, you, you will notice that in our webinar uh, platform, we only get to interact uh, with you at these specific times only via the chat, but there'll be times in the program that we get to hear your voice uh, through the microphone and then also video. But when that comes, we'll be able to alert you. So for now, just use the chat facility to indicate your name, sector, institution, and country. Thank you very much. And I can see I already have um, colleagues from uh, Ghana and other uh, countries. Uh, colleagues from South Africa, thank you. I've only seen Pascal Ojuang, please indicate your sector, your country, your institution as well. And just moving us along, because we have also a very tight program, I want to hand back the floor to uh, Stefan as you continue to register where you're from uh, to just give us highlights of what our previous Good Morning meetings have been and then also set the stage for today. Stefan, over to you. Thank you very much, Jackie, and it is indeed uh, good to see how many are still with us here in the forum, and we would like to remember again what happened so far in the first Good Morning meetings. Remember, please, we are talking here about the AU EU region with 82 countries and 1.5 billion people from model. What does that mean? We came from uh, the program and innovation management cycle, meta governance model. We developed uh, from this model a long term platforms process, which is a succession of different program cycles. <clears throat> and that is what we uh, presented in the last uh, two good mornings and what we discussed. What does it mean then to practice? In fact, we established a West Africa EU alliance and a North Africa EU alliance as a pilot in the project where we are developing different documents, uh, uh, approaches for uh, different processes towards uh, our final goal. And what is this goal? This is an AUEU platform for research and innovation on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. So from model to practice, we are coming from the meta governance model and the platform process, and we are moving towards the writing of an AUEU theory of change and impact pathway. TCIP is the abbreviation for the theory of change and impact pathway and the design of a monitoring and evaluation and learning concept and process. Furthermore, we are intending to develop an AU-EU communication concept to address the stakeholders more appropriately and to identify um, types of dialogues uh, between the actors in the AU-EU region in the food systems. Furthermore, we are about to establish um, uh, clusters, cluster networks and design cluster mechanisms for the interactions between different um, actors and uh, finally a polycentric cluster coordination approach and we drafted already a coordination hub for this with different elements uh, to coordinate clusters, a cluster network, 
um, as well as uh, 15 services for a program cycle. Um, furthermore, we are intending uh, to establish, uh, to initiate and to maintain a funders consortium. That is what the fifth of the good mornings of From Model to Practice, our stakeholder forum is dedicated to. And finally, we are intending to design a knowledge management and communication framework that serves all the needs in the AU EU region in the field of food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. What are we doing today? Again, this good morning three is linked, um, is uh, dedicated to uh, the question of how to link research and practice at program level. Who are the facilitators today? This is Norhan El Dalal from Egypt, Dora Fiani from Egypt as well. Jackie and I introduced uh, each other already. Henning from the BLE Germany and Prudence from South Africa. Um, the main moderation lies in the hands of Norhan and Henning. We have breakout sessions today uh, from 10 minutes after 10 to uh, 10 minutes after 11 uh, GMT. Um, these breakout sessions, so we will have five groups for these breakout sessions, will be facilitated uh, by myself, the first group, the second group by Norhan, the third group by Prudence, and the fourth group by uh, Dora and Jackie, and the fifth group by Henning. And with that, we are handing over to you both, Norhan and Henning, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So I'll share my screen now. <laughs> okay. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Um, trying to have a full screen here. So today we're going to speak about the, the topic linking research and practice at program level. Um, this presentation was prepared by Norhan El Dahal and Henning Nipschit, and we both work uh, for for funding on institutions. Norhan works for the Ministry of Higher Education and scientific research. And I myself, I'm a funding officer at the Federal Office for Agriculture and Food in Germany. So we are actually uh, confronted with this issue, how to involve actors into research to really uh, have an input to practice, to really affect change. And we are speaking about FNSSA, which is a very specific sector and we are talking about food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. I put here a small thank you to our colleagues from Sihambari who are facilitating all these activities. We have here Gaetano and Carlo, but we also have Maximiliano Bianchi. So let's go into the presentation. Uh, research to effect change in FNSSA. So how can research provide input to effect change in FNSSA? And how can this be organized by funders, by researchers, by innovators, by practitioners? So this is the topic of today and we will jointly discuss this. So we will discuss the why, the what and the how, and of course also the who. One of the challenges we always have in research and innovation is that we are funding research and innovation and we're trying to provide an input to change. But uh, the funding is actually very much, let's say, on the research and innovation side. This is where we have our eligible funds. And of course, our objective is to have a very high input change. Our problem which we have, and this is an important topic, we want to organize ourselves as funding managers to integrate the relevant actors, that research funds are often only eligible for fundamental research and cannot be used for experimental research. And in Europe, this lies also in the reason that we have uh, EU state aid law. So uh, all the funds applied for uh, uh, used for applied research 
are subject to this EU state aid law. And it requires quite a funder skill actually to use these funds efficiently and provide the actors with them. So what we have, the situation is we have a very intensive uh, dialogue and flow of funds and reporting activities between funders and researchers. So uh, this setting is normally very well established, but of course we have to see whether we are really meeting our objective to involve the private sector, the farmers, the NGOs, the EGOs and other researchers. So this is the issue we want to discuss today with you. This is of course, because we have our objective to uh, provide an input to FNSSA. And this is also the justification to invest research funding at political level. So we're trying to, for example, improve rural livelihoods, production capacities, provide input to um, SDG 2, to SDG 13. And of course, it's difficult to justify the investments if actors of change are not integrated. So what are the tools of the funders? Of course, you know, we have the tool paper. Funders control structures through definition of topics and rules for eligibility to use funds. We do that in calls, we do that in frameworks. And we also control cash flow. We can assign the funds to relevant actors, to necessary service. And we can also sometimes, not all of the funders have the eligibility to fund knowledge managers, M&E, question answer service for rural actors and so on, conflict managers. We also work in frameworks and the funds can trigger pre-projects, multi-actor approaches within projects, work with the networks and platforms. And it's always important to address the short life cycles of the projects. Normally they're only three years, which has to be seen in relation to the duration of the fiscal years and the necessary multidisciplinary. The funders also create rules. Funders control use of funds by defining rules for the mode of to use funds and project structures. And funders try to link scattered responsibilities. In the framework, they have actors with different roles and responsibilities. And these actors very often lack communication between each other. And this causes insufficient performance of FNSA research and innovation. And funders can fund these linkages but it is sometimes not well established. And this is why we're speaking about this topic today. Another thing is that uh, we can create fairs. We can have dialogues between actors in practice and research, and we're trying to facilitate this. And, uh, and what you can also do, of course, is allow practice and actors from practice to test the outputs from research. So this workshop today is one of the, the, uh, the tests on how at a virtual level we can actually bring the actors together. So at a later uh, stage today, you have time to exchange between each other's your ideas. So please also have a look at this fair idea here, this marketplace. Um, now in a research in FNSSA, and I can't see my screen at the moment, so I have to look on another screen. Sorry. Uh, um, I, I want to show you some examples for control of cash flow. And sometimes uh, you can do a lot by controlling the cash flow. I give you an example from my work field before. Where I, I worked in a group called EasyCat. We had a question and answer service for farmers and we provided vouchers to the farmers to pay for question and answer service. This means you're actually turning around the flow of funds and thus you actually control the actors dialogue between one, one and another. So um, 
this is this is one of the activities which is very important that you actually pay the target groups to um, to receive the services. Another example is, for example, we have a farming program at BLE where I work, and this is an organic farming uh, program, and it provides vouchers to farmers to pay teachers in organic farming. So you're not paying the teachers, you're paying the farmers so they can pay the teachers, and you assure by this way that farmers receive the training they need. The next topic, how to control funds, is uh, to fund and define knowledge managers. The knowledge management translates research recommendations into recipes or practice. And knowledge is the key factor to affect change. And many projects use this nowadays, and we have to really provide funds for this from a uh, funders level. Um, you have, for example, uh, also projects and projects framework to install moderators and conflict managers, which is, for example, done by Siebers at, uh, at Zalf here in Germany. So you see this is, uh, you can create dialogues at project level and uh, also fund capacity development within the research and innovation project. So the capacity shall be enhanced with all actors. We also work with pre-funding of projects. So uh, you, you can allow before the real project starts consortia to form and define priorities. And you can try and fund scaling up because this is actually the objective of all our activities that the solutions we have are funded we fund are actually scaled up. And I think you have very good examples of this also on CGIAR, for example, the orange fleshed sweet potato activities where you have research outputs being scaled up at market. And then of course you have the theory of change and impact pathway, which can be reflected within the projects and also within the programs. And this is what we do here, we learned a lot from, w, uh, from NWO in the Netherlands. And we applied this in Leap Agri, which is a donors network. And we are further elaborating this here in the Leap for FNSSA platform for the EU AU partnership. One of the important topics is how to install a rural labs, test research recommendations, to really test the proofs of concepts coming from research. And then, of course, it's very important to give research a voice, which is not often really the case, but I think we have very good examples from the COVID crisis. Uh, the researchers were the drivers in this crisis. I think this is uh, an example which should be appreciated. Now, the next topic I want to actually mention is how to solve complex riddles. We have complex problems and challenges in our field of FNS. And um, you can see also uh, approaches from IT systems development, how to tackle complex problems. So one of the usual ways to do this is you have the waterfall approach. You identify the You are muted, Henning. Oh, but I was not muted the whole time, was I? So since this morning, six o'clock, Henning. Ah, thank <laughs> no, you very fine. much. So my name is Henning Knipfeld. I work with PLE. And, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, so this, this, these different approaches on how to tackle complex issues um, is very much reflected in IT systems development. You have the waterfall approach where you identify the objectives and challenging questions. You design, plan, and indicators, and then you develop concepts, go into realization, testing, and finalization. And the problem of this approach is really that during the course of the project, you will encounter problems and uh, you cannot really push them back into the plan. So at the end, you have a finalization, 
which really doesn't always reflect all the challenges you've met. Very much um, uh, work, IT systems development now works with more agile systems where you can actually have very short sprints of development. You have a rough plan, you have a concept as a first implementation, you have a feedback and a reflection, and then you rework your plan you have a next plan and you work always with the feedback loops. Why I'm saying this is because this is in my, uh, from my point of view, a very good example on how innovators can be actually integrated into research with feedback loops, with inputs on how to rework the plan to really meet the objective. And this kind of work it requires um, a moderated process and multi-actor session. If you're interested in complex issues, how to tackle them, please have a look at this link. The Sinefin framework actually addresses this. So how do we integrate all these relevant brains to research and innovation? I want to show you just very roughly a few examples from uh, from South and Germany, there are different frameworks actually which have been developed to address scaling up and to address mobilization of uh, uh, local knowledge, mobilization of feedback mechanisms, and actually provide framework for action research. So these. Actually, uh, the, these approaches are very interesting to, to be applied and should much more be uh, reflected in rules which are provided by funders during calls. So our opinion is here that if we put uh, certain rules on how to set up research projects um, into the calls, into the funding guidelines, then we will have uh, first the eligibility for funds and secondly, very efficient uh, integration of actors. So today we want to discuss this topic. We want to discuss the why, the what, and the how, and the who. So what is the why? The why is, why do we do all this? What do we want to achieve? Well, we want to put research into use. We want to provide research. This is the main objective of research funders. But of course, we want to see it used. We would like to see that innovators scale up good practices. And we would like to see that scaled up solutions shall be improved step by step provide the basis for change. And of course, we need all the actors from research, the practitioners, the private sector, the small scale farmers, the producers, the government institutions and the NGOs to do this. So the what, how do you do this? Um, of course, we have the research projects to obtain a proof of concept. And then we have publications, we have information coming out, recommendations, and then we want to put the research outputs into action to set up a basis for scaling up. And we do this also with the networks and frameworks, especially by linking multidisciplinary consortia and to integrate isolated actors to achieve knowledge exchange. And these actors, who put this in place are normally the researchers, the practitioners, but also the information managers, the knowledge managers, and the managers for Emin. And now we're coming to the how. How can you control this from your desk? How can you control that with the, uh, with the tools of a funder, with your paper, with your rules, how can you actually um, start this cascade of activities? And one of 
because of the, the, the tools we have as funders is that funders pay and facilitate activities. So what has to be really worked on is how can we fund knowledge managers within the frame of normal research projects where we have a strong uh, focus on research only? How can we fund knowledge managers to translate research outputs and link the actors? How can we facilitate and fund information managers to pool the relevant information and make available all the information also free of charge outside the journals? How can we fund actors of capacity development, especially if you're working in production and nutrition? And uh, we need good de definitions here because often capacity development is actually um, seen as, uh, let's say, an activity to support university capacities, to support master students. But very much if you listen to the actors from practice, you hear that you need capacity development for the actors in production, for the actors in the market uh, chains, for the actors in the, in the projects actually to apply the research outputs. Then um, we should put a focus on scaling activities. So we have scaling out, which is the replication and dissemination of research outputs. But it's, a, it's, a, it's actually getting out of the project silo and trying to, to put it into practice. Then you have the scaling up, where we're actually trying to change institutions. For example, an institution which is user, where you try to change workflows at a production or market level, where you want to change uh, workflows also at, uh, at organizational level. And then you have scale deep, which is actually, you want to change the values, you want to change laws, and you want to go to, let's say, a higher governance level where you're really um, implementing programs at and then funders can amend cash flow to empower the actors through cash. This is what I showed before with the question and answer service, with the teachers for organic farming. If you provide cash to the right actors, you're empowering them to receive the services they require. And this is what the funders can do. So today, we will have this. We will have breakout groups. This means you will be sent to five moderated groups. We're 70 people now. We will be in small groups and you will be provided with a whiteboard with questions which can be edited by you. And I will show this to you in a second. But you will also have the option to have it like a fair. So you can actually, it's like a small marketplace in the first 30 minutes you have warming up questions. You will be asked to tell us about your institutions. You can ask questions. You can actually, I, 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 ask, I will ask you on the whiteboard to give elevator pitches about your institutions and your interests to promote a bit this partnership. And then in the breakout groups, you will have one question for elaboration. And this question will be actually shown to you in a small, Mentimeters online survey before you go into the breakout rooms. And you have the chance, of course, to develop additional questions if you wish. After that, we're going into the plenary. We will have summaries of our breakout sessions. And then we will discuss jointly, building on what we have for the why, the what, the how and the who. And what we are actually hoping from this workshop to get some input for a two-pager with objectives, proposed activities, rules, and lists of relevant actors which can be used in the frame of a transnational call to provide a guideline 
on how to integrate innovators into this. So what will happen now? We will go to the Mentimeter questions and then we will go do the breakout groups. They will be facilitated by the colleagues we have met already, by Stefan, by Norhan, by Prudence from NRF, by Dora and Jackie, by me. Um, so uh, a few minutes before the breakout sessions, the IT service from SIAM, YAM, authorized the facilitators to register on their PC activities of the work group. And before the breakout group start, the facilitators will, will receive a link to the Mentimeter results. So we will receive uh, a link to the results query we will have in a minute. And once the breakout sessions will start, all the attendees will be randomly and automatically split into five subsets. So don't be frightened because you suddenly will find yourself in a different group. And then we will have a facilitator and he, she or he will be able to start the registration and show you also the link to your uh, whiteboard. And then there's a small timer. And after six minutes, we will be 60 minutes, we will be chucked out again and uh, and that's it the facilitator will actually be allowed to share his screen so this is what will happen thank you very much um what i will do now i will quickly jump to one of the white boards find on my screen because this screen the everything so you will have one of these white group uh, whiteboards for example my group which has uh oh gosh i'm not sure whether it's question 27 or 26 question 26 and you will have the chance to have a, a warm-up elevator pitch where you actually just say what you do what is your dream what is your institution doing? So you can just go to the plus and say, Manning. hello, I am Manning, um, The screen is not shared correctly. Yeah, because we, we can have see the, the agenda. Mm -hmm. oh, hmm. I quickly stop, do it again. Can you see it now? Yes, we see the Padlet. Okay. So what you can do, you can actually first indicate what your institution is doing. You just press the plus. You say, hello, I am from VLE. And we are funders in FNSSA. And then you can also speak and it will be here. And then you go to the next question. You actually uh, please provide information what do innovators expect from research? And you have a next question is, what does research require as feedback from innovators? And then you're going to your main question and you have some, let's say auxiliary questions here and you can add the answers. So this is what will happen now. The facilitators can actually support you and now I will actually stop my screen because this is the end of my presentation. So I hope this is well understood. And I see that we are 69 participants now. So this is very nice because we will have like uh, 13, 14 people in, in one room. And uh, there's I, uh, somebody who raised his hand, Joshua Flammer. Yes, thank you. I, I just wanted to ask him now that we came to an end now to, to, to ask his question. Joshua. I think he's muted. Can you unmute? Yes, I'm available. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we I, can. I just, I just didn't see where the plus is for me to introduce myself, so I'm kind of concerned. Oh, you will be provided 
Now, when you're in the outbreak group, you will be provided with a link to a website where you have the white group. So this will happen now in the breakout. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. But it's a good question. Please feel free to ask these questions. That makes it easier for us. Uh, so from my point of view, I would be actually now ready to see the first Mentimeter questions. Would that be possible? Great. We can see the screen. So we will ask you a question now. Uh, can you provide the link first? Because I think we have to explain this, right? So please, we gave you a link in the chat, which is called Menticom. And you can go there. And um, I think you have to provide a code. Is it like that, CM team? I can't see that in the in the in the chat i'm not no, sure it works the, without the code was already provided in the chat ah okay thank you very much so the first question is what objectives shall be met by involving innovators into research please have your say please give us your point of view you have a few minutes So, can we see objectives already? Finding the direct efficient solution. Very good comment. So, you're using innovators to really provide feedback, to produce policy change, more impact driven research. Very good. Thank you. Dialogue and networking. Very important. Identify potential areas for innovation which may complement research. Thank you. Researchers should develop the right research questions to they provide uh, innovate provide the orientation. Promote the diversity, very good. Increase food security. Innovators will enhance the economic potential of the innovators. How can technologies for us uh, sorry have new technologies work for research? Right. Please provide more feedback. Practical and useful ideas that would really be implemented. Application of new recommendations. More comments, please. We will be in the position to make evidence-based decisions that will contribute to sustainable innovations. Great. Multiply innovations across innovators. Great. Practical application of results of research that can be scaled. Linking farmers to research. Innovation should not be limited to technology. It is important to include social innovation and lessons learned from the field context to ensure we uh, the feedback into joint action learning. Good, thank you very much. So, how much time do we have? We still have a minute, do we? Please, promotes the, the, uh, the innovators Integration promotes inclusion and innovation, employing the tools of science and technology and to contribute to sustainability. Thank you. Any more comments? Or are we through? I think we can wait one more minute. I think we're 70. So we really encourage everyone to engage in the discussion and have your say. Please use the link and give us more answers. We just, I think there are more coming now, yes. Great, to put both issues in the same track with market needs and behaviors. Very nice sentence. Promotes inclusion and innovation, employing the tools of science and technology contributes to sustainability. Great. I think these, these ideas are very good to have a set of rules for funders why they actually have a justification for the use of funds if they integrate innovators into research. 
impactful task to promote secure food and nutrition. Great, thank you. So, who do we have? Any more? Norhan, shall we jump to the next question? Or? Yeah, I think we can move forward. Maybe we work with the next question then, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. What are the effective concepts to involve innovators into research projects from a funder's perspective? So please put yourself against, again into the funder. We just have our paper. Often we don't know how to reach the farmers just by ourselves. We have to actually provide uh, funds and facilitate uh, uh, activities to reach out. And uh, we need a set of rules, which actually uh, creates the rules of the game to use the funds. So I think this is a difficult topic, but please give your food feedback. How would you as maybe as researchers like to see funds being provided to integrate innovators. How would you as innovators like to see funds being provided to be part of, um, of, of research? How do you as funders like to see that, that you integrate in? And please look at all the different actors like farmers, like private sector, like producers. Okay, so I have funding of communication and dialogue, use measures uh, in the project. Provide a platform for the discussion around the concepts to refine proposals. Call for innovators, very good. Ease the project call, make it easier, yes. We are also all sometimes very complex with our rules. Support cluster building. More ideas, please. There should be a benefit that will contribute to sustainability growth of business incentives. Participatory client-oriented approaches. Yes, thank you. When researchers start doing the research must involve farmers. And the best tool to use is design thinking. Please, this design thinking, mention this at, in, in your breakout group so we have it there. All of you, please, your arguments, put them afterwards into the breakout groups. Allow for flexibility, very important, in different complex environments. We need to identify who are the innovators that can help us move towards sustainable food systems. And how can we can donors, how can we get donors, stakeholders, including local decision makers involved in joint research? That's a key question. And the funders should co-develop or co-design the call with the innovators. That's a very good point. This is what we're aiming at here. Develop simple application devices for discussion and interacting among the players, yes. More ideas in research, yes. Supporting innovative firms to translate new ideas into practical tools. This means find experts to do this work. Upscale ideas support innovation centers, inclusive monitoring and evaluation of progress of research, ease the technology transfer from north to south, integrate industrial property processes for agripreneurs, introduce knowledge sharing platforms and alliances, encourage the research private sector linkages with capitals, which is important, thank you including innovators in the development of theories of change. A very good topic. So where are we, Norhan? You're the master of time. <laughs> now, I think we can also wait a couple of minutes because this is a really key question. I mean, we will have a chance to discuss further in the breakout rooms, but now is the chance to collect ideas from everyone here. I mean, we're 75. So I yes. think there is a bit more that could contribute to these really interesting ideas. Yes, this would be really good. Mm. So, 
learn from practice and accept that field actors can be innovators. Exactly. Not necessarily academic experts. Exactly. This is one of the different topics we have because we're normally trying to fund researchers. Dialogue to build the knowledge of farmers. Funding be made available to develop products ready for market from research out. Create the local labs. Knowledge sharing is a key in research and therefore is well, uh, should be well implemented. Place monetary value to in-kind contribution on expertise and intellectual property. This is very interesting. We have this issue when we are pooling funds. We are often trying to pool cash funds, but we are not really taking into account the value of intellectual property, of networks, of organizational skills, which we can find, especially at local level. Digitization of following up procedures and decreased paperwork. This is a good point. I work in digitization as well. <laughs> Involve stakeholders before launching the call itself to create ownership. Exactly. So actually create a framework um, on, 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 how, uh, on how to build uh, uh, the call topics on demand. Gender integration at all levels. Thanks a lot. Yeah, maybe we move to the next question. I think we reached most, almost half the participants now. Great, thank you. Yeah. So next question, please. How can actors be empowered to drive and sustain the innovation process. So um, we have this limited time in pro projects. We have limited frames. Um, how can we actually uh, sustain the contact to the actors? How can we take up challenges from, from projects before, from research before? How can we actually uh, um, um, overcome funding issues because we always have breaks in contact. Um, how can the actors from practice be involved in such a way that they take up the research outputs, go on working with these uh, outputs? Any ideas? The innovation process should build upon and add to actual development and humanitarian processes. Great, thank you. North-South partnership building. Adopt a multi-stage or multi-level funding of activities. Training towards the development of viable business plans. Ah, this is a very good, this is uh, having business plans for research projects. I think there's a very good thing and it is an issue for funders because funders are used to fund research. But if you have business plans in your research, this is actually uh, not a guarantee, but uh, a good approach to receive um, good output. Involvement of actors in the early stages of planning and implementation. Create market linkages. The action plan should be participatory before, during, and after. Exactly. Important to have or include sustainability plan for research. The nice thing with our network is when I have a look at the participant list, I can find them again in the comments. And you can see people you haven't seen for ages. Hello, Carla, how are you? Can't say anything, but I'm greeting you. Support in product service communication. Give the actors the role to be gatekeepers, evaluators, adjusters, and users through the innovation process cycle. Great, thank you. Involve stakeholders from at least three levels of organization. So we appreciate vertical linkages. Focusing the process on the needs and the weakness point. 
link the actual farmer's problems with the business development and research application. Very good practical recommendation. Incentivize actors to prioritize wealth creation in addition to job creation. Innovation ideas should be realistic and doable exactly. Funders must always meet funding deadlines, not just require partners to comply with activity plans. You're absolutely right. And this is one of the difficult issues with uh, deadlines, with the fiscal years starting at different times in, in the world. This can be empowered through capacity building, that is knowledge sharing and effective communication. Policy engagement, very important. Involvement of private and public investors in research projects, very good. Very good examples I saw with colleagues in Malaysia where practitioners and researchers have the same business plan and jointly earn money. Create platform for knowledge sharing and knowledge uptake availability for funds and timely release of funds. Create a sense of serving greater global good within the innovation. Master of time, have your say. How are um, we now? I think now we're 24 answers. So maybe we can collect a few more. I think so please, everyone, just uh, I think our our colleagues from CM shared the link again. If you cannot find it, it's in the chat. I think we can at least reach have the participants. So oh, please, I'm all LMS. You already shared it. Yeah. That yeah, I'm saying that you already shared it. So please, everyone, use it and have your say. We're really counting on your thoughts today and your proposals. Thank you very much. But it works great with the inputs. I'm very happy yes. about this mechanism. Setting up effective facilitation processes to achieve effective delivery by actors. Enhance actors agency, policy engagement again. Build capacity of actors on the innovation process. Stakeholder engagement. The capacity building, very important. Wonderful. Okay. Maybe we move to the next one. Yes. The next question, what is the role of knowledge management to address innovators? So what we have here, we have frameworks and the actors always lack dialogues on communication. So we need people who really shovel uh, the dialogues between the actors. And what is important to me, to have a good definition at the end of the day between, to distinguish between knowledge management and information management, because we need information management, but the knowledge managers are the ones who support the creation of knowledge in the network. And the knowledge is actually the tool to effect change with which you can actually act yourself as an actor. So please tell us, how can these knowledge managers be involved in research, in projects, but also in networks to do their job? Um, how can they facilitate the uh, generation of knowledge and the use of knowledge? So what are your ideas, please? Are there no knowledge managers on board? <laughs> so help understand complexity, appreciate linkages, but also synthesize concepts. Great, thank you. Great the culture conducive to innovation and creativity. Very important. This is what I, meant, I mentioned that we also in some project had uh, moderators for the project. Knowledge management starts by the use of management. Exactly. 
So it's a way to manage the whole uh, information flow and knowledge flow in the project. We need knowledge management platforms, mechanisms to identify innovative practices, to learn from the innovators, for innovators to review and identify experience which they could add, to support adaptation through knowledge management, to respect and link traditional knowledge to research. Great to enable joint knowledge and address common ideas and passions. Information, communication, and knowledge management. Can't read that. Knowledge managers are experts. They need to be involved. They identify the gaps. Exactly, knowledge management is a job which has to be foreseen in the funding schemes. Knowledge management facilitates wider uptake of research findings. Exactly. It actually, knowledge management increases the output from an investment into research. Create frameworks that are simple and understandable by any actor, regardless of his or her academic or non-academic background. Exactly, create recipes for change. Address the challenges and create solutions. Open data and knowledge, very important. That's the issue that the knowledge is very much hidden in, uh, in libraries, which cannot be accessed by everyone. Very important to innovate and have solutions to different issues. Increasing access to knowledge available. Exactly, this is the topic. To enable researchers to stimulate innovation and the cultural changes needed to involve the research projects. This is the culture change, which is very important if you have change management, the change management in institutions, in networks, which is necessary to effect change. So the change management, I think, is a very important topic. Drive further research by identifying gaps. Yes, improve evidence-based statistics to be able specific, to be able, I don't know. Improve evidence-based statistics to be able to maybe identify a specific solution. Continuous best practice sharing. Identify document package and share experience along the innovation process. This is a pack of recommendations to monitor progress. Develop capacity development plan, room for creativity and cultural diversity. Identify promising practices. Great. To be able to build on previous knowledge for easy adoption, adaptation of technology. I like this Mentimeter. I don't have to think myself. It just comes out of the network. <laughs> <laughs> We're 77 people. This is wonderful. This will give us nice groups afterwards. Yes, I'm really looking forward to the breakout sessions. I mean, we're collecting so many yes. great ideas. Yeah. So. so maybe we move on. Yes, please. What are the main concepts of scaling up in research and innovation? So I just put the scaling up here now. I was actually mentioning the different types of scaling uh, uh, before. Uh, so I'm actually addressing these different types of scaling out, scaling up, scaling deep, you have these definitions. But the main issue is how can we actually uh, push the ideas from research, the solutions into a different scale. And if you put it in a different scale, you need innovators to test this and to actually reflect the solution against, uh, against the reality. Let's put it like that. So please show us what are these concepts on how to uh, integrate different actors. Facilitate systematic planning for scaling up. Exactly, very good. So this is actually, what needs to be in the calls. Um, linking research to farmers. 
Um, I just quickly write, sorry, to Can someone write to Dora that we're here? Linking research to farmers, policy dialogues is a key. Would cultural mediation come in there? Yes, very interesting topic. Please have a topic in the discussion on cultural mediation. I think this is really a difficult issue because we're coming, we have different cultures, not only between nations, but different cultures between professions like between research and practitioners. Oh, this is very good, very interesting. Not that I'm not also appreciating the other topics. Please, more ideas. We actually tried to put the scaling up topic into the LEAP Agri call, the transnational call of the EUA EU partnership, but it, we didn't have a chance to go on with it. I think it's a very good option to go on with collaboration. End users, easy access to research findings, exactly. Mm -hmm. If you want to scale up, you need access to information. Linking with ancestral local knowledge. Increasing the capacities of organizations to implement scaling up. Okay. Um, waterfall versus agile, perhaps a concept towards commercialization of R&I. Very good, because uh, th this would mean maybe that you need an agile concept to, uh, to actually push versus commercialization. Is it like that? Interesting, understanding commercialization, undertaking takings with various non-traditional stakeholders. Yes, strengthening access to new innovations and practice. Monitoring and evaluation of the impact from research and innovation on the farmer and the end user. Facilitating outreach of promoted innovations as close as possible to the end users, preferably within the scope of an innovation platform. Be realistic with regards to the optimal size of innovators versus the desire of researchers or policymakers scaling up and out. This was means, of course, um, that, that we are still uh, in a research project and it is very important for, the for that the researchers have time to, to concentrate on their research as well than this. A territorial perspective would be a good frame to scale a sustainability approach. This is what we're actually trying to do in Leap for FNSSA with, uh, with a sub-regional approach that we started working in Northern Africa and Western Africa. And of course, this is only an example. Replicating successes recording in a project in other locations in order to increase the number of actors and beneficiaries. Um, this is actually taking out the successes to other regions to measure the, the solution's effectiveness. Good planning on how pilot-tested innovations can be implemented on a larger scale and achieve broad impact. Provide visibility studies to encourage funders and establish pilot <laughs> projects to move researchers from labs to farmers to see themselves. Capturing and sharing of experiences of those who implement the innovation or live innovation. Great, thank you. Integration of value chain in the agriculture sector may help to scale up in research and innovation. Capturing and sharing of experience of those who implemented the interview. Oh, I read that before, sorry. I think it's, uh, it's time to move forward with the agenda. So we stay yes, on please. time. Yeah. So that was it.
as far as I see. That were the questions. This is a, already an enormous treasure of input we have up to now. Thanks a lot. So please, colleagues, from what I understand now, we will now build on these topics. We jump into the breakout groups, is it? Am I correct, Noran? That's what we're doing now, is it? Yes, we will have a chance to discuss more in details all the great ideas we collected in the different groups. And then we come back after the breakout sessions and uh, report on each and every room and all the discussions that took place there. Great, so I wish you a lot of fun also. We should have fun in our lives discussing things. So you have the possibility now in these difficult COVID times to discuss with real people, to come together and have a chat about what are your interests. So I, I so see. So where, where we, shall we start? Or shall we split the, in the session? Yes, please. Yes. So, So you will be now chucked into great breakout rooms. No, no, me lo fa perché? Che cosa? So, so I see that Dora is there. Hello, Dora. I'm nice here from the beginning. You. Ah, sorry, I, I didn't see me. Oh, sorry. Maybe no, I didn't okay. see my screen because you sent me a WhatsApp. Sorry. <laughs> I know I was uh, worried not to be able to connect, but I'm here. Great. We, 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 didn't, we didn't see you, Dora, because you focused your camera on this beautiful picture of the horse oh. behind of you. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll change that right away. Is it uh, okay now or I have to change it?
Hello. So was it interesting to chat with the others? Yes, definitely. I think we collected really great ideas and everyone engaged in the discussions. I think we have a really good group of attendees today. It's fun. Great. Very interesting. Yes, thank you, Kiyu. You really had really interesting ideas too. Welcome back. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you very much. How did you make this with this echo? That was impressive. I want to. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> this is the poop. <laughs> Gaetano, did you check that people from group three uh, are, are with us? Yes, we are here. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Not, not that we lose people in space somewhere. Okay. <laughs> in cyberspace. <laughs> okay. So, just have a small relaxing summary maybe of what's interesting discussions we had now in the group. So I think the first thing I'd like to say, I, I, I liked uh, one of the comments very much. That was one of the last comments. And uh, we said there should be quite some research on how to create dialogues actually, like we're doing now and to make them enjoyable as well. So it was Leonet who said that. I think that was very nice. So I think what we could do as a first uh, topic now is just get feedback from the, the different groups. How did you like the format? Were there interesting people uh, in, in the groups? Um, did the format work? Is that actually a fair format, which we can use more often to just actually meet in our platform? So please, uh, Stefan, you're number one. Could you maybe uh, just provide a very brief feedback how it was? Um, yes, thank you very much. Perhaps my feedback would be more with regard to the content and I would like to leave it to the participants um, to give a, a short feedback how they felt. Uh, with this setting, um, we we had several questions with uh, which led us to to different details in the relationship between innovators and researchers, and very much in general, um, how I would summarize uh, the discussion. Uh, and thanks uh, again to the colleagues who joined working group one and and contributed uh, richly in in this uh, palette. Um, is that uh, there are different expectations from the innovators, for example, they would need some clear market analysis and also foresight uh, with regards to potential uh, market fields um, in the future from researchers. So um, on the other hand, researchers uh, would need uh, clear um, statements, a, a clear uh, expression of uh, the needs of the innovators, um, which uh, can be addressed by, by research. Um, innovators also would need clear outputs, so well-analyzed uh, data and, and new ideas coming from research, and this has to be communicated um, through appropriate communication channels. And then we were indeed um, in this uh, question, how 
do we want to shape this platform? Which communication infrastructure is needed? What um, do we need with regard to uh, deeper detailed knowledge about the stakeholders? Who are the stakeholders and how uh, are they related or could they be related to research? And um, this was, was roughly what we were discussing and that um, indeed, um, we have to think more in uh, cyclic, uh, in the dimension of cyclic communication, of, of cyclic dialogues between research and innovation. This is not a one-way road. Um, researchers need feedback from the innovators, the innovators from the researchers, as if we are addressing, we have to address more a very constant, long-term, agile approach. And this um seems to have to have um uh, uh consequences for the design of the platform uh that we want uh including uh the flexibility in the future to change it where needed and to address uh the, the constant change in the diversity of actors to be involved. So it seems we are at the beginning. There is clearly a gap in the field of communication, at least at the beginning, between um, research, between science uh, in general, and this would include the education system, and um, the innovators uh, who are working on new products and new services for the societies, which means the societies also have to be involved. It's all about communication and the communication infrastructure where there are several gaps where we have to work on. And um, that was also the reason why um, all the participants in working group one have been invited uh, to join the working group uh, number two in the Waia and in the Naya region. There is where we work on a communication concept. So it was mainly about communication between innovators and research. Back to you, Henning. Your microphone is muted, Henning. Sorry, thank you very much. Norhan, could you just name your topic and maybe tell us how it is? Yes, so in uh, group two, we were discussing uh, how to involve the innovators in research projects, um, for example, using the calls. Um, so I think the format was really good. Everyone was able to just add the ideas easily. And uh, having uh, collected the answers from the Mentimeter gave us a chance to go more into details and discuss uh, all the ideas and highlight the most important ones. Um, so I think from the formatting side, everything went well. Uh, we had uh, actors from different um, stakeholder groups, innovators and researchers and private sector as well. Uh, the discussions were really interesting. And I think uh, the main highlight is that this topic that we're discussing is really important and relevant to all the actors. Uh, one of the major points that was mentioned several times is that we should engage uh, the innovators, the researchers, and the funders from the beginning, the co-design of the calls, um, including all the actors. Um, and also, um, we discussed the benefits that the research could get from involving these innovators um, in, the, in the research project and the other way around, and how this should be um, uh, led on participatory approaches, and uh, how we should focus on the end users in the um, uh, advancement of the innovation and technologies, and uh, link the relation between these end users and the researchers, uh, the researchers, um, by um, uh, using the the innovators as an intermediate between them to actually um, discuss the actual needs of these people and try to uh, focus the research uh, on this uh, aspect of the of their their actual demands and needs as well. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Back Was it that? You. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, I just wanted to add that they had also interesting ideas on how this could be funded somehow. Uh, ah. We have a chance to share the answers afterwards, after this round. 
or should well, I just mention may, maybe it do it right now? directly mm -hmm. do it now if you want to yes please okay so um just one second So some of the ideas were uh, about uh, royalty from revenue. I think this was one of the important ones and how this is implementable, um, sustainable and participatory to reward the innovators to the revenue profit from the commercial venture of the outcome of the research. Um, and I think this was one of the really uh, interesting ideas, at least for myself. And this allows all the actors to contribute uh, to workable ideas in order to implement it. The commercialization of the, of the research was also mentioned several times. And I think most of the group agreed to this. I just wanted to highlight these points. And then back to you. Thank you very much. That seems to be an interesting group. Yeah. Prudence, yeah, number was, three. Yeah. Thanks, Henry. Um, we were discussing uh, question 24, um, which dealt with um, different ways in which um, actors can be empowered to either drive or sustain the innovation process. So um, during the discussions, um, colleagues agreed uh, that uh, it is important to involve all actors right from the beginning and uh, to the end. And all of the actors, not just specific type of actors, that is difficult to have research start at the beginning and only have um, the donors or the funders coming in at the, at the tail end. And then also colleagues emphasize the issue of sustainable plans, um, that this must be developed uh, by all actors together. And then they also emphasize the, um, the importance of um, making sure that the innovation ideas that are put on the table are context specific, they're realistic, uh, that they address the local needs and that that's, they're useful um, to the communities. Otherwise, what would be the point of, of, of carrying this out? And also um, the issue of training and capacity building was emphasized um, and the issue of emphasizing evidence-based research and um, one of the issues that was also emphasized was the importance of um, funders coming on board with ensuring that the disbursement of funds are done on time, especially because upscaling is a very expensive um, exercise. Um, so that was emphasized and also the issue of ensuring that um, we involve uh, stakeholders at different levels, not just at three um, uh, levels as it, as it was suggested with the first plenary, um, that um, because innovation is so complex and also dealing with multi-stakeholder partnerships is complex, we must ensure that we address um, stakeholders at, at many different levels. And then also there was an issue of um, looking at ensuring that um, the solutions that are put on the table from the research, um, that they are sustainable and that they can be adopted easily and they are cost effective and they can be beneficial to the, um, to the users. Um, so I just highlighted a few of the things that were, that were discussed that I think are important to highlight now. Um, thanks, Henny. You are muted, Henning. 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 Yes, you are muted, yes. Uh, I'm always muting myself because I don't want to disturb you. <laughs> and then I forget it. I was thinking you were in the space too. Yes, I was lost in group five. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Jackie and Dora. So uh, you're two. I don't know how you get about that one, but you were in group four. <laughs> Who's going to tell us about your group? I, I would. Uh, I don't. Yes. I didn't hear you uh, clearly, um, Henning. Um. So so we're in group four now, and we had had Jackie and Dora facilitating this. 
who of you two would like to provide some information on the group, please? Dora, you're not, you're muted. Yeah. I was going, uh, I would suggest, Jackie, that you go ahead because you have taken quite a number of notes. I think Jackie is, uh, Jackie's line is interrupted. Yes. Oh. Maybe Dora, you can start because Jackie has got uh, an internet problem. Ah. Can, Dora, how, how was that? How was that first bit where everyone just uh, let's say, had the opportunity to, to present each themselves. Was that well? Did that when go well? Uh, yes and no. Uh, apparently, the uh, the response uh, during the first uh, session, your uh, your presentation, uh, was higher. But yes, a number of the persons have presented themselves, and that went well for uh, some of them. Uh, the, there has been a very interesting discussion on uh, the differences between knowledge management and information management. And uh, that triggered a lot of comments. And in particular, uh, the definition of information management versus, versus knowledge management. Another uh, interesting uh, topic came out is the um, the need to uh, customize uh, research to uh, the needs of the innovators, as well as uh, the need to define innovators uh, and to uh, portray them in a clearer manner, because innovators, in actual fact, is used to define the private sector at large, and that would require uh, a clear innovation. Another topic was the uh, uh, the type of involvement which innovators expect uh, from research. Uh, in fact, the development was much more, the discussions were much more towards expectations of innovators from research rather than the reverse, which seems to indicate that uh, the needs on the innovator sides are more important than the needs from the researcher side. Okay, thanks, uh, Dara. Maybe I just add. Sorry, my internet just fluctuated a little bit there and mm -hmm. got off. Uh, I think, in summary, Dara has highlighted what the discussion was like. The key takeout points from that discussion was one: uh, information is raw material while knowledge is the uh, refined, organized uh, bit of information. But then uh, participants felt that users need knowledge more because they're in, in, they have too much and information overwhelm. So therefore research should provide that knowledge side of it. But then also there was this feeling that most of the time when you mention innovation, people think of technology and do not put emphasis on the social aspects of innovation. So, or the cultural aspect or the contextual uh, aspect of innovation. So we need to have a contextual, contextual definition of what innovation is so that we don't just uh, automatically assume it is in reference to technology because there are other sides of innovation. The other thing that I found interesting in the group discussion was that even when knowledge uh, management is more sophisticated, needs to be more sophisticated, it does not necessarily need to be more complicated. So there's need to unpack knowledge in a way that it is relevant, useful, and uh, profitable to uh, the actors who are using it. And then I think there was also, let me just look at my board for one second. Um, there's the need to also uh, promote open access, especially for scientific uh, research publications, uh, for research uh, data and also application. But what was interesting from the group was the fact that the users need, the users need to be involved, not just at the application phase, 
but also from the design phase so that whatever knowledge management systems are being used has, are actually relevant to uh, the end users when it is finally processed. And then the last point, which is what I also wanted to, to highlight, is the fact that uh, knowledge and wisdom is critical and as said, very relevant to the user because they can find information anywhere. And therefore, when uh, the different processes, innovation processes, knowledge needs to be able to um, uh, reduce the gap or uh, refine or improve the innovation process. So even the missing link within the process, knowledge management should be able to rectify uh, and also make the uh, process, the innovation process more relevant and contextualized. So I want to stop the ending and just add on to what Dora has said we discussed. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So let's jump to group five. I was in that group. So as I said, I think it, we were actually discussing at the end of the, the group discussion, we were discussing this issue, which I just mentioned that we really uh, need maybe research or maybe uh, quite a lot of uh, concept development on how to actually um, create an interaction in our networks, in our platforms, which is interesting, enjoyable, which is participatory. And this is really a challenge, especially also in these, in these times, we are learning a lot from my point of view, also from COVID. Um, so it went well in the beginning. Of course, it's not always easy to, not all the colleagues always say who they are and what they do, but it went pretty well. And um, then we actually entered into the question, uh, what main input do innovators expect from research? And uh, it was actually said that, that uh, the innovators, they're actually uh, the, the ones who are testing the technology, who are looking at the technology, how it can be commercialized. We're actually uh, putting their research outputs into the tension of that reality out there. And only if the technology is well tested by research, it can be actually um, be prepared for transformation in, in businesses, in, in value chains, in, in, and so on. Um, uh, and this involves to, of course, to, to, to integrate all the relevant actors and to um, have all the relevant actors in the research process from beginning. Um, so, so you need all, all the, you need a process, also a citizen driven process where you can always have feedback from the local level, from the level you're working at, uh, to, to your research and uh, but then you also have to reflect that if you want the scaling up and sorry I forgot to, to mention the topic of, uh, of our discussion group was the different scaling activities. If you want to uh, uh, achieve scaling, you must uh, involve all the actors that are actually can play the role in scaling up to the policy maker who provides the ground to uh, to then uh, achieve the impact. What was interesting is that uh, mm, if we're talking from the funders point of view that uh, the communication, what funders expect from their researchers, what type of scaling is not often very clear and, and that's why actually the funders should be a stakeholder in the whole process. They should participate in workshops of the research projects, of the research programs, of the platforms to actually provide their view of what they think they're funding. And uh, this is also important because the funders, according to the participants of that group, are the ones who are actually uh, supposed to keep track of the 
of the research output in the ecosystem, in the political system, and they actually have to integrate the actors for the different scaling activities. So it's the fund's responsibility, which I think is really interesting. And it was also said what happens quite a lot is that the whole burden of the process is put on the researchers, while normally it's their role and work and intention to just do the research. So um, it was said that it would be good to provide uh, a, a sound uh, research system, which also provides resources and people to facilitate the process for the different activities of scaling. And uh, Mary actually gave a very good example from Nigeria where they had studies uh, at, at farmers level uh, with vegetable and soil uh, issues. And um, they, they actually had um, uh, an actor who was an evaluator who actually um, compiled all the information, brought it together and already prepared it for a project follow-up for the scaling up. So it actually shows that you need these people as well as knowledge managers, as well as MME actors, as well as capacity developers who actually support this activity. Then it was also shown that uh, we have to very well define what scaling we are talking about and we have to differentiate. So we have this process of scaling up research and innovation for example, to produce research at a bigger scale. So we're coming from a small uh, project and we want it to be uh, scaled up the research at a bigger level to get feedback for, uh, for other aspects. And then you have to uh, differentiate it from the process of scaling up the innovations this, themselves. That is uh, the implementation of research outcomes. So it was very interesting and it showed that we need, uh, if we want to go for scaling up in the calls, we need more feedback actually from also the funders, how they imagine the theory of change, of transformation, how they imagine that the actors contribute, how the research outcomes can materialize in the change, in the transformation, in the theory of change that was provided. So this was very interesting and I liked the format because it it involved all of us and was not so much like just a few people giving presentations. And that's the end of my report, thank you. So now we are actually according to the agenda, jumping into uh, a plenary discussion, which is actually uh, um, introduced by a Mentor We Meet a question. So maybe we go, it's a very easy question. It is, uh, let's, it is just what are the most important aspects which came out of the discussion for you? Because with with it we with these uh, uh, aspects which you take out of our discussion, um, we will actually jump into a plenary discussion, and uh, so I think we quite have already quite some flesh. We have the we had the flesh from the Mentimeters in the beginning. We took these aspects into the breakout groups. In the breakout groups, we had a chance to maybe discuss. Uh, also our questions to see what are the perspectives of the different actors. And now please write in the main words of, of, of what most interested you, what aspect, because with this, with our experience from our discussions up to now, we will jump into the plenary discussion. I will try to lead and this of course, I hope will work well because I would like then of course you we still have 56 uh, participants now to provide all the ideas we have developed in the course of the day uh, uh, for, for the last discussion. So please go to the Mentimeter and write what are the most important.
important aspects, the most impressing ideas, the most interesting ideas, the most funny comments, whatever. Please. Dialogue. Dialogue. This is a good word for coordination infrastructure. Okay, next one, please. Dialogue, Commun uh, communication infrastructure, twice, Communi uh, coordination infrastructure, participatory, relevant, sophisticated, knowledge, eye-opening. Oh, could you please send again the Mentimeter link, Stephen says? in the chat right it's in the chat yes but we can put it again i'll do this oh humorous it should be humorous open science very important gender issues technology transfer uh, alliance building inclusive Strategies, probably eye opening strategies. From my look on the participation list, I just saw Bernard Malaise here, our former coordinator from Leap Agri. Welcome, Bernard. I'm Hi, happy everybody. you're here. It's a, it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bernard. Our, our active pensioner. <laughs> Happy that you're here. Communication. Soft skills, soft skills, very interesting. Soft skills are probably these skills which we mentioned in the services for uh, evaluation, follow up in the project, communication, uh, knowledge management, building a common language, ethical innovation. Maybe we have to go back to that topic. I'm not sure whether I understand the ethical innovation. Please take back these words later to the Henry. Workable ideas for funder. What does that mean? That means the ideas for the funder should be set up in such a way that we can take them into practice or how is it? Contextualization. Isabel, you have to leave. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Scaling up and deep. Okay. Data management policies. Very interesting. The open source sector was emphasized and the open data sector have the data management policies, right? Um, what else do I read here? Very inspiring to have these words just jumping in front of your eyes. Commercialization, good that someone wrote it. I think I wrote it wrongly the whole time. Emotional intelligence, interesting. There was something that came up in the 19th studies on emotional intelligence. Copyright, copyright, very interesting with open data. Very interesting to talk about copyleft, which is the copyright for open data, which was actually developed by uh, Wikipedia and which is the basis of this huge knowledge pool. Wikipedia is the copyleft is the difference to copyright. Hmm. Mainstream value chain. Clarity. Clarity is a good word. It's much too small. Rose Omari asks, are researchers and innovators mutually exclusive all the time? Good question. Uh, 
Oh, this is interesting. We are 55 participants and we have 55 comments. So, how's, how's the mood? I think we can try and jump into the discussions. Shall we, colleagues? Shall we go into the panel? Yes, I think so. I mean, every one of the participants already replied, so this is impressive. And I think everyone is in the mood now to discuss this in details. Wonderful. So I'll put some oil to my voice. <laughs> and let's see where I have my, my whiteboard. So here we are. The screen, can you see my screen? Yes. Great, so uh, I just put here in green actually uh, are just a few definitions of innovation, technology, practice or product handling that will bring increased yield and income to the farmer. Innovation can provide an opportunity for agricultural producers to increase productivity while better managing natural resources. At the production farm level, many innovators are process innovators uh, our process innovations that improve production techniques. I just put this here because I also know the fruit basket because I think we're working in a field which is not easy. We're working in a field where we have so many actors compared to other research fields and we have uh, so many different languages. So we're, we're here in our FNSSA, Food and Nutrition Security, and sustainable agriculture, which also involves um, that we are actually speaking um, about, about all these aspects which were highlighted in our discussion groups. There was Xavier who said, the funders and the program managers, they actually have to take into account that all this knowledge which is generated comes together uh, to form a bigger picture, to have an impact at different levels, at local level, at national level, at global level, have the links to the other fields of research, which are very important and formulated in the SDGs, like, uh, like hunger, like climate change, like education. So, so this is what has to happen. And this is why we need a multi-actor approach. And uh, I just put here a slide from, um, presentation. So we're actually uh, discussing how can research provide input to effect change in FNSSA with all these different is and with uh, uh, at different cultural levels also when we're also having discussions, for example, between research and private sector and small scale farmers and so on. So we're discussing the why, the what, uh, the how, and the who. And uh, what I wanted to, um, I cannot push this. Oh, now I can push it. So uh, what we're saying here is we have to see how we control this integration of actors. Um, we have to control the flow of funds. We have to control the, the reporting, the imp information provision. We have to control the different uh, concepts feedback going into the research system. And of course, we have these different actors here, private sector, farmers, NGO, GOs, research, all the others I don't have, I didn't name all of them, and you have the innovators. So, I cannot push it. Okay, let's push it along my arrow. We are on the white board. So what we have now is, I just made uh, three columns. I have the why, I have the what, and the how. And of course, we can always write on the red cards, uh, who's the actor actually implementing the specific action. So please help me 
I'm here in virtual space. Which topic would you like to start with? I'm not always sure whether it's, in, it's easy to start with the why, because we had lots of uh, comments now why we should actually um, uh, develop a system which allows research to have an impact. We, that There are lots of whys that we have, uh, why we should integrate the different actors to play their role. Um, Oh, but but start where you want to to start um, with the why, the what, or the how. Have you got topics where we can actually open the discussion? Please, anybody. Henning, should we write it or just say it verbally? Just say it, Dora, please. Okay, so on the why, I may be uh, a little bit too strong, but it is the raison d'etre of research, uh, enabling private sector producers, small scale farmers, GOs and NGOs to develop and to uh, improve themselves is the raison d'etre of research. Otherwise, what's the point? And uh, more so, uh, it's very important to address private sector globally. In other words, one cannot talk only to small farmers without talking to the private sector. And the reverse is true. And NGOs as well, because this uh, triangle relation is more and more building up uh, farmers, private sector, and a civil society. Thank you very much. Any other one? Any other one? I, I, I'm sorry. If you, you, I cannot see if you lift your hands. George, I think you lifted your hand, please. Yes, I did. And um... <laughs> If I may come in, uh, I just want to continue where Dora left off and uh, to say that it is very important for all the actors to come together in producing a particular innovation. And it's for this reason that now we have what we call the innovation system concepts. In fact, some even refer to it as a theory. And in the innovation system concept, we are emphasizing the role of all actors in the innovation process. And so all these actors you've stated, private sector actors, producers, small scale farmers, and so on and so forth, they need to interact. And in the course of the interaction, particular need for new knowledge is identified and where that new knowledge is obtained and applied in the course of interaction, we have innovation coming up. If, for example, you take the case of new products on the market, they came as a result of the producers or probably the entrepreneurs identifying a particular need for consumers. And so they get to work on it. They may involve researchers or particular innovators in that particular field. And then they're able to put the innovative product on the market. And so that kind of holistic approach to innovation is why it is so very important for all the actors to come together, interact in order to make the innovation successful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like that holistic approach is basis for success. 
Who else? Oh, Florence, please. Yes, and sorry for the echo. Uh, I think I actually think it would be important. Uh, in the last year and a half, there had been a lot of work done on the preparation of the UN Food System Summit. A lot of it was related to research, a lot of it was related to the role of the private sector. Many of the things we discussed this morning kept saying, well, this is already being discussed. So I'm not saying that they found the solution, I'm not saying the methodology was not actually fairly messy. But I think there's been a lot of work done. The problem, Nick. Sorry. I cannot hear her anymore. Can, can you hear me now? You are back, Florence. Hello? Yes, Henning, your you microphone is muted. Yes, Florence, we can hear you yes, now. Florence, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry. Did uh, did you miss everything I said before? We should start from the start. Please say it again. I I was okay, not yeah. able to. No. I'm, so, I'm sorry uh, to repeat if some of you got it, but I think that when I heard all the discussions this morning, I was thinking, oh, that's really interesting. And I said, but that also is very relevant to a lot of what was discussed for 18 months in the preparation of the UN Food Systems Summit. So I was wondering if uh, maybe it would be worth checking what has been said, what documents that have been produced. It was a fairly messy process, but there's been a lot of work done, and I think it would save us some time, as well as be able to build on the processes that are now being followed up on. So I think connecting to this, we're talking of sustainability, we're talking food systems, we're not talking only value chain, and I think there's a lot to fish in there. Thank you. Thank you, great. Another color. Ah, uh, can't see any hands at the moment. Anybody, please just speak. Maybe you want to bring in some of the topics you discussed in the working groups to fill the why and the what and the how. Colleagues, can you see a hand? Or colleagues, can you provide a hand? Ah, there I saw one. Mary, thank you. Thank you. I looking at the efforts put into funding researches in the past and where we are now, we can see that the business as usual is not working. So there's the need, and we realize that the issue of food production is a complex issue. And for, a, for a, a, a situation like that, we all need uh, a multi-dimensional approach to it. So there's the need for us to uh, engage all the stakeholders, the private sector, producers at different levels, all of them to bring them together in determining and when they now come together it is not an issue is it at the same time because there could be arguments there could be miss uh, you know um, interpretation of ideas but whoever is facilitating will be able to give room to this zone to operate the zone at which the actors will have to um, present ideas, argue over ideas, and critically use, there are tools to be used. 
to evaluate ideas, to evaluate um, suggestions from uh, the participants. And from this, with the tools, some of them are online, some of them are micro skill tools to be used. And from this, you know, come up with ideas that are uncommon, unusual. And that is why in designing this kind of a, a project, like we were taught in the morning in the presentation today, that you don't have the plan, absolutely. So you have your plan, it's like a uh, agile uh, that temporary plan concept and nice on the, the what is happening what is happening in the dialogue in the meetings of the um, participants of the actors and so we need this um, approach in order to get uh, uh, a lasting solution to the food production challenges that is, that is currently facing Africa and also even also in the Europe's that are you know, the continents, they have their different, the, the scope and the, uh, the situation could be different. But I, even in America, they still have uh, nutrition challenges. Why some people are suffering in part of the world, some are obese in another country, you know. So thank you. Um, thank you, Mary. I, I didn't understand this, this issue with you don't have a plan. Okay. Um, maybe also to, due to technical reasons. Okay, what I mean by saying that the plan, if you are using a multi-stakeholder multi approach that we for, involve all the actors, the plan, I mean the objectives of the uh, research or whatever, is not um, at the initial stage. You have something, it's just a template to start. So it is in the, as you go on, interacting, holding meetings, holding workshops, holding, building up knowledge that people will come up with their ideas. Because in this kind of uh, approach also, you, we need disabled, we need women, we need people that are somehow vulnerable to have input. And who knows, even the local knowledge, you know, the indigenous knowledge, so it goes beyond the scientific, like the indigenous knowledge to climate uh, challenges. There are locations where the indigenous, they, they know, even when the birds are, they use birds or whatever, to know that rain is about to fall. Rain is not falling yet. And so we need all this input. That's why I said that the plan we have is, uh, is, is a temporary one. The objective is temporary. So by the time we go on, the stakeholders keep on meeting on different issues, then we develop ideas. And there are methods to evaluate the ideas before it is, um, it is finally maybe ranked as ever an innovation. That's what I'm trying to say. So, so you're, you're, yes, I think you're, you're addressing an, an agile uh, yeah, environment, an agile. right? Yes, yes, an agile, yes. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, Stephen. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to speak to what we can do to achieve our objectives. One, I think there should be deliberate plan for evaluation and monitoring. Deliberate plan for evaluation and monitoring. Most projects have failed in the past because after implementation, nobody monitors the success. And after two, three years, you don't even see any sign that such program has taken place in that particular environment. So deliberate plan from the beginning, from the onset. Then number two, there has to be planning for multi-stakeholders workshop or meeting for role identifications at different stages of the innovation process. Uh, multi-stakeholder meeting or workshop is very, very important. Then number three, <clears throat> Um, there also has to be 
um, a conscious um, effort to create deliberate and effective linkage among actors, creating deliberate and effective linkage among actors or the key stakeholders. The number four, the fourth one, uh, involving all actors at every stage from beginning of innovation development to the end. This is very key to ensure sustainability of any in in innovation. If actors are not involved at all the stages, there may be some gap which could result in, in this failure of such innovation. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Gosh, this was quick and precise. Thanks a lot. Mavis, please. Hello, yeah, thank you. Yes, um, to achieve um, our objective, I would like to also add from the previous speaker, add on to that. That is also before mentioned the importance of involving state, uh, stakeholders, private sector and all that. But we should also consider the, uh, the, the, the means, the platform, so I'm suggesting that we form a um, uh, knowledge sharing platform where we would learn from each other what uh, each group is doing, what uh, each actor is doing so that when we are together, we'll be able to learn from each other, share knowledge and then improve upon it. Secondly, also forming alliance is also a very good activity to learn from each other and also sustainability plans is also key in this. Thank you very much. Sorry, the last one? Yes, um, developing a sustainability plan. Yes. Great, thanks. Yeah, thank you. You get me typing. <laughs> Stefan. Thank you very much. Have a breath, uh, Henning. And I just briefly want to refer to um, Mary Ido's uh, um, intervention here with a question. We are uh, working, or we, we initiated currently the work on a cluster concept for the AU-EU region. And uh, we are about to identify different categories of clusters. And uh, based on discussions that we had before and other um, events from Leap for FMSSA, we came to the point that indeed we have to distinguish between clusters of projects on which we are working quite successfully, I must say. We are establishing a database of, of um, projects and, uh, and a cluster of, of projects. But uh, we also um, envisage uh, scientific clusters, clusters of different institutions in a certain thematic field. But also, and this is uh, my point here, very much in general clusters of expertise, which would include knowledge, which is not scientific knowledge, but existing knowledge and more on a local level. So my question to Mary, but also to the other participants here, uh, what relevance from your perspective has the idea of building clusters? of maintaining clusters for a long-term perspective and to link clusters into a cluster network. And how can we do this in this very um, specific field of non-scientific knowledge? Um, where can we, uh, is, is that realistic um, to think about a clustering process on a very local level um, to ensure um, the, the flow of knowledge, which is not necessarily scientific. Thank you. Mm, I see. Uh, I'm not sure whether Jackie is answering to your question, but Jackie has lifted her hands. Yes, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, what I wanted to say, uh, I think, it's still following on what Stefan has mentioned about the clustering process, but then there's need for coordination. But my point was, in addition to what uh, I think Florence said at the beginning, where we build on existing uh, 
uh, processes or programs or uh, publications or outputs or outcomes. Uh, the group that I was in, I think group four, they said a very interesting statement that maybe we need to manage knowledge management. And that stems from the fact that there are so many platforms out there. So our task uh, should be to manage or coordinate those platforms. And I think it builds on what Stefan was talking about, clustering of expertise or clustering of interest, because then we are able to have a, a coordinate, coordination role. And that has more value addition than just creating another platform. I think that was the point. Thank you. So it still doesn't answer Mary's question, but it just adds uh, more, more information in. Thank you. Florence, please. Yes, uh, I just want to, to add for the, to the two last questions. I, I can understand very well the need for scientists to keep uh, into a science uh, group where there is already a common language. Uh, it's very important, it has to be maintained, but I think it's equally important that researchers join the other clusters or whatever you may want to talk about it, because there has been, there is now a lot of interaction between groups and we need scientists to join to bring their additional value to bring their voice and i believe it would help them also get further funding because by seeing what other people are discussing and seeing is there anything there we could add and whatever then it's probably you may be able to access other sources of funding thank you very much New. Okay. George. George, yeah. George please. Yeah, thank you, uh, Nora. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, I don't think I'm going to answer. I cannot hear you, George, at the moment. Can you hear George? But just to share some no. thoughts. Yeah, uh, George, yes, can you please and, uh, start from the yes. beginning? Yes. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear can you, you hear now. now. Okay, okay, thank you. I'm saying that um, I just want to share some thoughts on the idea that uh, Stefan brought up. And uh, let me begin by saying that the cluster concept, it's quite a flexible concept and you can apply it in whichever way you want and also um, according to what purpose you want to apply the, 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 the concept. And uh, in the way that he has described it, yes, we can. We can decide to have clusters of um, experts or if you like um, researchers or innovators or whatever. Um, in what we were involved in, and when I say we, I mean CSR Step 3, um, back in the 2010s to about 2015, in fact, it's supposed to still go on, I said that um, the clusters we have initiated and formed and facilitated um, have virtually um, become, uh, um, what's it, different. And so you would hear me talk a lot about the issue of sustainability when it comes to cluster development and cluster um, initiatives. And so, yes, it is up to us. We can decide to have various clusters of the various actors that we would want to engage in our uh, uh, program. Um, however, we need to be aware of the facts that then, of course, the challenges would be many and we'll need to address them. And uh, for me, 
my biggest challenge is the challenge of um, uh, sustainability, where you want the clusters to continue to uh, be active, um, especially in the absence of, um, of, of, of funding. Uh, in our case, what happened was that we were operating under the auspices of the Pan-African Competitiveness Forum, which was being sponsored by CEDA of Sweden. Um, so then at that time, it was easy to put the clusters together. We had clusters um, mainly in the private sector uh, of small and medium enterprises. Um, and in particular subsectors. So we had, for example, um, clusters in textiles and garments, um, uh, basically small and medium enterprises operating within the uh, textiles and garments uh, subsector. And we try to facilitate the uh, entrepreneurial activities to enhance competitiveness. We had uh, clusters in wood processing and we facilitated them um, in order that they will be more competitive, the products they put on the market. We had for mushroom growers and, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, at the end of the day, um, the sustainability became a, a big challenge because the external funding that was being infused in the facilitation process and of course the process own activities uh, became an issue. And so um, let me go back to my fundamental point. Yes, it is up to us. We can decide to have the various clusters uh, insofar as they enable us to create more linkages amongst the clusters and amongst the actors so that um, innovation will be promoted or enhanced insofar as we are able to get them to deliver on, on our um, expected output, outputs and outcomes, we, we can do that. Um, however, let's be aware of the complexity of um, facilitating all this and making sure that there is sustainability at the end of the day. Thank you very much. Sorry for the long. Ah, you don't have to say sorry for giving such good comments here. Um, I think I have Mary, right? Or yes, let's take Mary. I'm, I'm not so good at looking at it at the Mary. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm listening to all the submissions on the cluster concept. Um, we have a lot to learn from where it has been um, operating. You know, we are just thinking of um, having such and then in the southwestern um, part of um, Africa. So we have to learn and see what are the uh, pitfalls or what are the successes recorded and where it, is, it has been um, op in operation and what do we need to do to make the one we are proposing to establish to be sustainable. Thank you. Thank you, that's a very good thing. We have to learn how to handle these big collaborations. That form exactly. Um, Stephen, please. Okay, I, I just want to comment on the the cluster concept. Uh, I've been involved in a project since um, 2009, 2010 to date, and that um, um, the Pharma Business School protocol developed by GIZ. I've been one of their trainers uh, since 2010, and um, to some extent, we've tried to use this cluster concept where we have uh, clusters of the different um, actors. And one thing I've noticed is to ensure the sustainability, um, it's necessary to have effective linkage 
among the actors of different cl clusters. When that is uh, ensured, when fund is no longer available, since linkages has been established between these actors, it will help them to continue with whatever activities um, they are carrying out. Then secondly, on how, um, in all our discussion, I, I think something is uh, missing and that's involvement of policymakers. And for me, I think this is very important. Uh, one of the lessons learned from the success recorded in former business school um, intervention program for farmers in, we had, we, we had it in about 24 different African countries. And then in Nigeria, uh, we have it in about, um, about 25 out of the 36 existing states. And we've trained over 1.5 million farmers on this concept. I noticed that one of the things that helped us to record the huge success was involvement of policymakers. Uh, for example, uh, when we started, we tried to leverage on the um, existence of um, extension agent um, in agri development project in Nigeria. So we, we don't really need to look for new trainers. Uh, it is these existing people, existing trainers that we actually empower. But to achieve this, we have to go through the government so that the government eventually agreed that one of the way information will be disseminated to farmers will be through the farmer business school approach. If at the point of planning, at the inception, we neglected the policy makers, we wouldn't have been able to achieve the success that the program achieved at the end of the day. So I want us to look at this closely. Involvement of policy makers, most especially the government to create an enabling environment for innovation development. I think this is very important. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Leonid, please. Thank you. Just a, a quick reaction on uh, what uh, Stefan uh, commented about clusters. I wonder, and it's more a question too for the maybe ACM uh, team, if it's possible to implement right now just an additional question in Mutimeter to know more about the cluster initiatives where uh, you know the, the participants have been involved in. You know something that can allow to to see what in practice already exists. And that can be taken again, like uh, the question of the type uh, that if they have participated in a cluster initiative, if it was uh, more thematic, if it was uh, geographical, territorial, if it was a group based. So I guess that could give us a bit more of information for the discussion group on clusters. Okay, thank you very much. I don't know whether it works to set up a Mentimeter right now. Yes. Sorry, Anning, this is Siam. For us, it's okay. If, uh, if you agree, we can uh, implement just now the, the new question and invite all of you, all the participants, to, to, to answer. What kind of question? Open-ended? Uh, 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 no, it will be more uh, closed. I, I'm going to put in the chat the, you know, the, the idea that I have in mind. That I want the CR people to, to put it in a, you know, to shape it as a, short it text answers might be short text answers. Okay, okay. okay. Just one minute and the, the, the question will be ready. Well, you are incredible. <clears throat> that's great, CM team, indeed. Henning, if I may briefly respond please to uh, Stephen and also Leonid <clears throat> because um, indeed uh, we are addressing right this question of how to include policymakers more and um, to clarify what is a cluster. So uh, we should not be shy uh, to raise questions and to show if we do not know what is exactly a cluster, how does a cluster work, for what purpose, and there are quite different understandings of uh, what is a cluster. So we have uh, the idea of establishing a private sector cluster. We are active in that in the North Africa uh, EU Alliance, but what, which clusters else? 
could be relevant and 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 what does that then mean what is the dynamic and what means sustainability so sometimes clusters might appear and, and they might disappear because there's no need for them anymore or as um i think uh, steven mentioned this also um the the there are no effective linkages to maintain the process of a cluster so again please join us in writing a document a common uh, um, a cluster concept which uh, indeed has the, uh, the, the, the purpose, uh, the, the aim uh, to define what do we mean with a cluster, which different types of clusters uh, uh, could be imagined, which one do exist already and which one might have to be established and so on and so forth. Let's keep this as an open question. We provide a document in progress to which you all can contribute. Please contact us and we will uh, include you into this uh, small group that already uh, has been formed to write in a draft AUEU cluster concept to give some of these answers uh, to questions which have been raised here rightfully. Thank you very much and back to you, Henning. Thank you very much. Um, Dora, did we miss you out? Your micro, please. Um, I wanted to point to uh, the cluster in what concerns the private sector and the relation of the private sector with researchers. Uh, in fact, it's almost as if there is a need for two levels of clusters. One is to facilitate relations and cooperation among the private sector themselves to enable the, their capacity, to uh, improve their capacities to uh, exchange with researchers and express their needs. And the second would be the relation between private sector and researchers. Uh, again, the work we've done indicated a great interest on the part of the private sector to join into a cluster format with researchers, provided it is based on specific topics and specific uh, programs where there is a real partnership. And then maybe we should say that, uh, say to ourselves that cluster is also about learning to work together. It's not just a group of persons, it's learning to work together. Thank you very much. We have a very interesting comment here from uh, from Florence. The first Henning, we, Henning, yes. We are ready to uh, share the question on Mentimeter, but uh, I have to quit the, the sharing of the screen. You're sharing. I May I? Out. Okay. okay. So, have you ever been involved in a cluster initiative? What was it about? What kind of cluster did you attend? I have to see where's, do we still have the link here? Oh, there it is, sorry. So it's the same Mentimeter link we had before. So have you been part of a, no, not yet. Have you been in a, in very, let's say thematic groupings like vegetable network, banana network, something, or was it a rather more multi-stakeholder partnerships? Is a funders network a cluster? Stefan, 
It is, is it? Uh, I would say so, yes. Uh, and this is, a, in a way, the theoretical perspective on, on grouping in, in general. I would call funders also a potential cluster on the AUEU level. You might call this the funders network. But in the field of temporary funders consortia, I would define them as a cluster, yes. And also on the local level, that was this would be possible to see it from the cluster perspective, how the funders interact and um, address potential synergies. Science academies, very good. Prop advisors. Yeah, but uh, um, Henning, maybe if you say yes, you say a little bit more so that it's not just yes or no. Okay. So, so you, uh, uh, Jackie, you're asking the colleagues to, to provide more information, right? Yeah, like it, yes. it's, it's a yes and no question, but if your response is yes, indicate what cluster, because that's helpful. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm not sure if uh, there is going to be a second question, because the idea was precisely to differentiate between the different types of clusters. Mm. So uh, with three options, at least, uh, if they are thematic, uh, geographical, or group-based. So that would be more you know, useful. The answer is yes. It would be also useful to know if the cluster was more localized in a country, in a region, or if it involved, for example, interaction between Europe and Africa. Hallelujah. So you were all parts in clusters, as it seems. I also see if I may jump in here. Yeah, I did such as policy booklet of African Union them after 2021. I don't understand that. But if such a policy booklet exists, <laughs> please let us know. Send us the link, send us a message or a document. Um, so that we can share it in the group for the cluster concept. I think George shared something in the chat, but I'm not sure it's the same. Yeah. Could be, yes, the not. link doesn't work, yeah. unfortunately. I, I tried it already, Noran, yes, this, mm. this link doesn't work. Perhaps, George, you might want to share it again, or perhaps the document has been moved. Mm. Um, thanks. Sorry. Actually, I just went from the next and I saw the document. Actually, it is something coming from uh, the Dutch development agents. Didn't participate in what we participated, I mentioned, or a CDAS from. Um, under the umbrella of the term competitive forum. But that document, maybe I didn't copy the link, but I'll try it again with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Henning, please be aware um, we must slowly come to an end um, of the session. Yes, but normally I would say we're very much coming to an end, right? From what I understand is now that we have uh, uh, lost my agenda. I think maybe we can move back to your board and wrap up. Yes. I think this is a yeah. good idea. <laughs> so shall I grab the screen?
Okay. So thank you very much. And this is very impressive that you quickly set up a Mentimeter. So I see Rose has her hand up, please. Yeah. I want to share my experience with the class pack. So as uh, George said, we did it under a project. So we had funding for that. And I was specifically in charge of uh, the mushroom cluster, where I went to introduce the concepts to them and they were able to organize themselves. So for we as researchers, what we do, that cluster still exists to date. And uh, one of the support we give them is to allow them to use our facilities for having their meetings. So they come to stay pre here for their monthly meetings and all that. But their sustainability is a, is a challenge because the funding is no more available. So they themselves have been trying hard to keep the group together. So recently, they even established a WhatsApp platform and put me on it to help them, you know, get pro right proposals and all that. So I just want to say that the cluster thing is there, but uh, sustainability and uh, how to get funding, there must be somebody who facilitates, you know, the group, keep them together, you know, make sure there's continuous flow of funding, always activities within the cluster and all that. This has been lacking. That is the experience I want to share. Thank you very much. So, normally we should have done the wrap up by now, but maybe uh, we have discussed such a lot up to now. We have uh, discussed the why, the what, and the how. We've just discussed, discussed a lot about the clusters. Uh, we've seen that there are other platforms up there. For example, the links we have received of the UN Food Systems Summit. So um, what we can do actually now is uh, we can maybe jump to that section of the agenda where, where you maybe just quickly summarize your main takeaways now and uh i mean we have a mentimeter before please you can use this first and then we come to this session that you mentioned here oh i can't see that on the agenda can you help me out with this one mm, sorry yes sure so we have uh the uh, mentimeter question 27 please you must stop sharing the screen uh henning yes. and then cm can upload this and please lead us through this Mentimeter question, and then we can indeed close the good morning. You will find again um, in the chat uh, the link. To I thought the, the Mentimeter. question 27 we had already, right? What are the most important aspects coming out of the discussion? Yes, I think this was the last one. We did this already? Yes, just okay, before the, the, the plenary discussion and the meter board. That, that was the word cloud we had. Okay, good. So then I'm, I, I was mixing up something. Sorry for that. So then, um, indeed, uh, thank you very much for um, this session, Norhan uh, and Henning, but in particular our guests here. Uh, who are who, who joined here with this platform process. Very happy to have you here. Uh, let's have a last good morning tea and coffee. And um, let's um, in a way summarize a bit as Henning already uh, suggested, uh, what are the most takeaways of this uh, discussion here today? So please feel free to activate uh, your microphone. I cannot see now, let me... Um, switch this on uh, the participants so that I can see who is raising her or his hand, please, um, very spontaneously, what, what are your takeaways from uh, today's discussion? 
Please activate your microphone. I see Henning raised his hand. Henning, please. Well, for me, I must say, because the, you, you never know what these kind of meetings, how they work, whether the breakout works, uh, and, and uh, whether it is possible to create uh, these virtual exchanges and dialogues. And uh, I'm very pleased with this. And for me, the question is whether this should be actually a uh, uh, concept for the platform we are creating to have these kinds of exchanges with, with the, let's say, a bit more loose uh, possibility of just discuss uh, more often and build on that what Rose said, uh, that, that you need always to trigger meetings also between clusters and different groups. Thank you. Thank you very much, Henning. Are there other comments, other statements? What are your spontaneous takeaways from our meeting here today? Please raise your hand or activate your microphone and jump in. For uh, me personally, um, it's quite encouraging that we discussed so much about clustering and that um, um, in a way, for me, I take uh, with me to the further work that indeed we have to define what we mean with clusters and what are the potentials of, of clusters. So what else, colleagues? We spent four hours nearly now uh, together. What is your takeaway from today's discussion? If I'm not wrong, 51 person are in silence now. Hmm. Okay, 50, I'm talking. But colleagues, please. <laughs> Be courageous. Just Katharina, please. Yes, hello, everybody. I think it's very crucial to cluster people or actors, if we call them such, among the same objective. So now today we have gathered together because we share the objective of building a bicontinental um, group or cluster of stakeholders. Um, and these objectives might change from time to time. And I think um, the nice slide that was developed by, by Henning with uh, the questions on who and how and the objectives we have to be very specific of which are the objectives there might be an overall objective like building a platform but then there might be also very specific objectives and we might be more focused on on the specific objectives uh, that we have in common and be more targeted in uh, in our approach to address those objectives and develop joint strategies on how to to act on them Okay, thank you very much, Katarina, for that. Um, colleagues, um, I see here also uh, in the chat, it, it was uh, from uh, Ibrahim, would be a, a good idea to have a once a week good morning session, an hour or two maximum per session. Um, yes. Uh, why not? Indeed, this was a long session here today, but I hope uh, that it was uh, fruitful for all of you. Please um, join the process. So we already mentioned in the good morning uh, one session, uh, which working groups are already in existence. We are about to form a working group now on the private sector, also in the West Africa EU Alliance. We are working on a cluster concept, please. Join these groups, um, get in contact with us. You have our contacts, you find them on the website and um, we can maintain this process. It is in our all hands. We are just facilitators. And unfortunately, um, we have to, to inform you end of this year, this project comes to an end, but not what we initiated. So please be active, stay committed uh, with these working groups, join them and, and work together with us. Um, in that sense, um, allow me to uh, close this good morning here. Uh, with uh, a big thanks to uh, all the speakers, the technical and logistics support, uh, which are uh, 
in particular our team in, in, in Siam Bari in, in Italy. That was a great job that you are doing here and also with uh, bringing in a spontaneous Mentimeter. Uh, that's perfect. You all deserve um, a star here. Um, we, we thank you so much uh, for all, all the participants here to join us. Please talk about this platform process that has been initiated um, with this project here. In this project, we have many African and European partners and um, you are a part of it now and please become more active and, and join us in this um, ambitions uh, to ambitious, ambitious to uh, uh, create a platform that we want, a uh, coordination infrastructure that we want and that we need it, and also the support that we need for um, different group activities like cluster activities, creating a cluster network. All this needs your creativity, your ideas, your input. So please join the working group uh, groups that are existing. We are looking very much forward uh, for the next good morning session, uh, which is uh, this week, Thursday on the 10th of February. We are focusing there on the issue of uh, knowledge management and communication framework for the AUE region. Uh, Leap for FNSSA was very active um, in that in particular with regard uh, to building a project database and um, a digital instrument to analyze research output. We will hear about that on the 10th of February on Thursday, uh, same time, nine o'clock uh, to one o'clock uh, GMT. Um, thank you very much for joining this meeting again. Um, and uh, we wish you a lovely afternoon, uh, not only in the name of the Working Group Actors Alliances and Policies, our colleagues from Siambari, but from uh, the whole team in LEAP for FMSSA. Um, we are looking very much forward to meet you in the next Good Morning, Good Morning number four from Model to Practice on the 10th of February, Thursday, um, this Sorry, week. Stefan. Sorry, Stefan, sorry. Please, um, Carlo. Before... <laughs> Thank Carlo you. from Siambari, please show us your, you. your face also. We have a few seconds more for this, please. Yes, yes, here I am. Before leaving, as usual, we want to take a photo of, uh, of all of you. So please switch on your camera and smile just for the photo. I'm sure that you told me uh, to mention this at the end and I forgot this again, sorry. <laughs> no problem, no problem, Stefan, no problem at all. That's why we have Carlo. <laughs> So, yes, so. you can also wave in the camera, colleagues. No. <laughs> it's nice to see all these people. Great. Rose, you were vanishing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All the best thank and you. see you on bye. Thursday. Bye. 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 See you. Okay. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.